The Extremist Movie Debate. And tonight, we're talking 2016's Hidden Figures. I am Joe. I'm Ethan, and one of us is going to love it, one of us is going to hate it. Let the coin decide their fate. Almost dropped it. I hate it. I love it. Hey guys, don't try to send us to the moon, there's spoilers ahead. Alright, and this film has a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes, which makes it certified fresh. Ethan, since you hate the film, this first question is for I wonder what sound. he's going to go for. I'll try to avoid brown people this time. Ooh. <laughs> Not off to a good start, but... Uh, so this comes from Lenica Cruz of The Atlantic. Lenica says, Hidden Figures doesn't try to push many artistic boundaries, but it tells the story so well that it doesn't really have to. So how did the simplistic approach to the story uh, work for the film? You have one minute. I think it did it a disservice. I feel like you have... A lot of people who were great people in real life, but this movie portrays them as people who were only disadvantaged because of external forces. And I think that that does a disservice to them and also to a movement of tolerance. Uh, if, if, you know, this movie, it feels like is made sort of in the same vein as Blindside and The Help, where it's kind of made more for white people to try to be better in their lives. Um, and I think that, if you were to show them as also complex characters, maybe that that would be better for the actual real people, as opposed to, I don't know, fictional people that sometimes are portrayed in movies. Yeah. Okay, uh, Joe, you have 30 I'm trying seconds. Trying to say that through. without sounding terrible. That's all right, Joe, you have 30 <laughs> seconds to respond. See, I disagree because I don't think there is a white savior in this movie. And whereas, like, all of the um, like conflict is circumstantial, uh, it's, it's these characters that are actually overcoming the circumstances to better themselves and to get where they want to be. And there is, they are complex characters because at times they've just kind of given up and said like, this is the way it is. Like the segregation's a thing and there's no way around it. But then they just get a little push or a little nudge and they decide to like, well, no, fuck okay, it, I'm John, gonna go I'm gonna for it. Okay, I'm gonna have to cut you off there, I'm sorry. But uh, Ethan, you have 15 seconds to respond. Oh, if we're gonna talk about a white savior, yeah, Kevin Costner was the white savior in this movie. Sure, he didn't have as prominent of a role as Emma Stone or Sandra Bullock, but yeah, no, he was in this movie. He's the one taking down the colored bathroom sign and he's the one getting her inside the boardroom to talk in the meetings to get better data. Okay, Ethan, yeah. thank you. Uh, Joe, you have a final 15 to respond. See, he, he yeah, he knocks the sign over, but he actually, did, denies her access to the board meetings time and time and time again until she actually pushes him to the point where he has to let her in. It's her pushing him to the point. He doesn't sweep in and say like, oh, come on in. Let me do all of this for you. Okay, She's Joe, pushing her you. way into it. Thank you, Joe. Uh, and we're going to go into the next question. Joe, this one's actually uh, for you. This comes from Joe, Ol or not Joe, I'm sorry, Jay Olson of Cinemixtape.com. Jay says, the film's ultimate failing is that it treats their characters as feel-good cogs instead of the trailblazers they were. So uh, just please describe the roles in the film and how they worked as more than just cogs and help tell, you know, the overall story. You have one minute. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the movie itself is is all about how they were trailblazers. And even at the end with the with the text up on the screen, it's showing everything they had done. And the movie itself at the end. At the end, but the movie itself is watching them get to that, like breaking down the, the first barriers to actually allow them to do all of this stuff. Like we see the we see the, we see the woman get her engineering degree and get into college. And when there was a segregated school, which is against the law, but she pushed it and went to the judge and she pushed it and pushed it until she got into the class that she needed because so the she, white people told so, her to. So she, Ethan, please don't interrupt. So she could become an engineer. It's her taking those steps to do it. No white person is allowing her to do it. In fact, white people are denying her the access and she has to push it. Same thing with Tereji and same thing with Octavia Spencer. They're all doing this on their own and they're doing it themselves. So it's showing the personal, like, um, I guess their personal motivation to get them to, to do the stuff on their own. And if it's not for their own motivation, nobody else is gonna do it for them. Okay, thank you, Joe. Ethan, you have 30 seconds to respond. 
sure they're motivated, but they're also like the best at everything that they do. I mean, all she has to do, Octavia Spencer, is go to the library and steal a book, and all of a sudden she's the best programmer in the world. And all that the other girl has to do is go to court and get that one class enrolled, and all of a sudden she's the best engineer in the world. And again, because a white person told her to do it. Yeah, they, they are very superficial cogs in a machine. I, I agree with the person you're quoting, very much so. Okay, uh, Joe, you have 15 seconds to respond. Just because we don't see Octavia Spencer pouring over a very dull book about oh, we do programming. On a, we no, do shut, on the, a bus shut the ride. fuck up. Yeah, Ethan, please shut up. Not, please Can you just not, like, talk? We, so we don't see her pour over it for three months, and now you're going to bitch and moan about it. It doesn't mean she didn't actually do it. She stole the book. We know why she knows everything she knows. And yeah, she was the best at it. Okay, That's uh, why they made a fucking I'm movie sorry. about it. I'm sorry, Joe. I'm going to have to uh, stop you there, and uh, can you just take a deep breath for me, please? <laughs> Ethan, you have 15 seconds to respond. <laughs> she read the book on a quick bus trip. <laughs> Move on. Okay. Uh, I'm going to open up the floor. You guys have four minutes to discuss. I see what you're saying. I see, well, I see what you're trying to say, but you can't keep just whenever, whenever there's any opposition to like your theory or what you didn't like about it, you can't just revert back to saying Kevin Costner. Like that's not a good defense for you, but I see what you're getting at. I feel like the I casting just... of Kevin Costner is, it feels like if you took a focus group of people and you're like, okay, white people, what's the least offensive thing we can put in this movie to make it more accessible to you of this movie about colored people? Ooh, how about Kevin Costner and the dude from the Big Bang? Theory? There's a reason that he was the star of Swing Vote. We know he can swing <laughs> on both sides of the fences, okay? We get it. He was in Field of Dreams and he was in some other movies, Perfect World or whatever. We get it. Kevin Costner's an everyman. He's the real everyman, Mark Wahlberg, not you. But Accurate. it does not take away from the fact that these women did extraordinary things on their own. And just because we don't see every little step of the way, this movie's still two hours. So just because we don't see them pouring over and studying, which is dull and boring, it's not fun to watch somebody study. And even you, Frost Nixon, what was the worst part about Frost Nixon? Sports montage. The of sports montage where he yep. is studying stuff. So we don't want that in a movie because it, it slows it down and it fucks the pacing up. Sure. So sure. that's why you need to streamline it and show them how they know the information they know and then show them how good they are at the information that once they have it. But does it do a disservice to the person in real life to show that they're not actually getting ahead by this hard work that the movie's focusing on, but instead by other people conquering these barriers of race? Instead, we can show them like working their but asses off the to get through these hurdles. I think the movie works in, like works twofold, and that's the thing. The movie works twofold because they have to break these race barriers down I, to obtain what they want it to. It feels like and, a... So, so not only... Do they have to be the best engineer they can be? They also have to break down like this misogynistic world and this racist world to get to where they want to be. And you get that at the very beginning. You say, suddenly she's the best engineer. No, she had studied way before that because when she was talking to the actual engineer, he's like, why aren't you an engineer? And she's like, if I was a man, I would be. So she already knows as much as she is allowed to know at that point. When the and movie that's starts. why she's so, yeah, and that's why she's so good. And doesn't so she just have needs to do to anything go. to advance She just needs to, to go get class. the certification. So you wanted a, do you want a prequel to Hidden Figures to see how all these people got so smart? I mean, perhaps, but then also Octavia Spencer has to become a programmer. That's a pretty big, pretty big leap in, you know, careers. No, she already, like... She reads a book on a bus. She does not read a book on a bus. And on top of that, her brain is already built that way because she's in charge. She's in charge of this whole... Like department it's, 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 okay. that does the calculations. So she already knows the calculations. She knows what, what is supposed, she knows what the results are supposed to be. So she just needs to get from A to C, basically. She just needs to learn B and she does it through the book. And none of the other people know it. It's not, it's not like everybody's a programmer. This is the 60s. Yeah, nobody, so, nobody, so nobody, knows. nobody can. Except so it's for the people even, at IBM you would expect to. Those guys weren't from IBM though. Weren't they? No, they were from NASA. Oh, that's not really explained well. And I don't feel like this movie necessarily does just a disservice to the people of color in this movie. You look at, say, Buzz Aldrin. Was he that perfect? Or, I'm sorry, John Glenn. Not Buzz Aldrin. John Glenn. Was he that perfect that he, you know, skipped ahead in the line and went to go talk to the group of colored people at the press briefing, whatever, when they were landing on the tarmac? I'd like to think so. You would like to think so. But it's also, like, they're just going out of their way to make people as inoffensive as possible. The most offensive person in this movie is Kristen Dunst, who again, kind of comes around in it and is not really all that bad. Like, you see her point of view. She doesn't, she doesn't, like, begrudgingly, though. Yeah. It's not like she's okay, happy. But, like, they have that whole moment in the bathroom. I'm not to get there. Uh, how do you uh, really feel about the movie? It's pretty good. 
good. No, it's good. I mean, kind of like what Ethan was saying, not not to that extent, but towards the end, actually, I didn't really have much of a defense because it, it is like the movie is really safe and it just does kind of, it seems like with the, with the John Glenn stuff, it's like make it as inoffensive as possible. And it's kind of, the, the movie's built around kind of like offensive subject matter so i feel like if they would have leaned into that a little bit more but it was pg too so i mean mm, you're, you're I getting that. yeah you're getting like this like elementary school safe biopic of these three women who who did extraordinary things like they did and they things. should have a movie about yeah. them um every other one there too absolutely and no and i mean it's an inspiring movie but women. like i would li i would liken it to like miracle or like a sports movie like i would liken it to like an underdog story that's like a feel good inspirational movie opposed to like a nitty gritty like study about like race relations um but no i mean it's a it's a well made movie but it doesn't push any sort of boundaries yeah i mean a, a difference of that is like you look at rudy and it's rudy's physical stature actually does make him suck at football whereas the physical characteristics of these women doesn't make them bad engineers whatsoever joe, we don't talk about rudy joe on the show. hates joe Open you hate rudy i hate rudy i didn't know this about you rudy's horrible okay well what would, like you rate, <laughs> what would you guys rate what you guys well the movie? yeah uh, I'd give it. I'd give it seven. I'd give it seven lightning strikes, and no, like a little bit of thunder, I guess. Like the story itself, like not the movie, but the story itself is something you're like, that's really cool, and that's something I didn't know, and I'm glad I know that now. But the movie itself is just like the catalyst to knowing the story. Like there's no real residual re residual effects from the movie itself. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll give it seven as well, and a, a splash of thunder. It, it, it makes you it makes you want to look further into the details. Which is great. That is, you know, a good end goal of a movie. Absolutely. Um, I just, I feel like it's a little bit safe. Well, and I yeah. wanted it to be a little bit grittier given the subject matter. Um, that being said, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to our channel, comment below. And if you do, leave us a comment about a future movie you'd like us to do and a question about said movie. And unpaid intern Jeff will go ahead and read that on the episode. And we can debate it. All right. Thank you and good night. Good luck. Good luck.